Bruce Lee didn't just fight with his feet and fists. He was someone who set goals and fought to get what he wanted. Bruce was the type of an individual that if he told you he was going to do something, he did it. A recurring opponent was the status quo. After moving to the U.S., Lee began teaching Jun Fan Kung Fu, meaning Bruce Lee's Kung Fu. He taught all races and creeds, defying traditionalists who staunchly believed it shouldn't be taught to non-Chinese. Of course, he was teaching people outside the Chinese community. My gosh, I mean, he was mixing it up with whites and blacks and Hispanics and other Asian groups, God forbid. He defied the Chinese martial arts community. This was so against tradition, so against thousands of years. Lee would go on to challenge traditional martial artists again as he blended numerous styles together and rejected any element he considered useless. I don't believe in system, Mr. Longstreet, nor in method. That's going to throw some salt in some of these grandmasters' games. This is going to make a lot of people mad about what this young Asian guy is doing. The wonderful thing about my godfather is he wasn't afraid to go against the grain. He pissed a lot of people off by that. A lot of people hate things that go against the average thinking because one thing that we do as humans, we try to group everything together. Lee's revolutionary spirit inspires many top athletes and entertainers today. I see a very similar parallel between his opposition or going against the tide, going against the grain of culture of the martial arts scene, because we, as a skateboard culture, we had to go against the tide of what people said we were and went from backyard swimming pools to stadiums. And it all started with us having a dream and not allowing anything to get in the way of that. Bruce Lee was challenged many times to fights because people didn't like the fact that this little guy was going against tradition. And like myself, it's probably why a lot of magicians that are not professionals hate me because of my success and because I threw the tuxedo and the rabbit coming out of the hat and threw it in the garbage. But I think if you're true to yourself, you're passionate about what you want out of life, you just do your thing and never look over your shoulder. And uh, Bruce Lee did that. While Bruce Lee always fought for his beliefs, the path wasn't painless. A lot of people were going against Bruce Lee. The industry. Nobody wants to invest money in a relatively new Chinese actor. His own people, people with money. But to Bruce, it wasn't about the obstacle. It was about how you dealt with it. Well, we fight alone or all together. The hell with circumstances. To hell with circumstances. I create opportunities. <laughs> Bruce Lee first impressed American audiences with his television roles in the mid-1960s. But his real star quality wasn't showcased until years later in a string of popular movies from the early 1970s. Films that would eventually become the stuff of legend and change the shape of Kung Fu cinema forever. I don't know of any movie now that holds up to a Bruce Lee film. I just would watch him on repeat, always relentlessly, relentlessly. I could recite probably all his movies, and I haven't even seen him in a while now. Do you remember what was the first movie you saw? Fist of Fury. I watched Fist of Fury recently. Fist of Fury. It's like early Bruce, you know what I'm saying? I was probably 12 years old, and my Taekwondo instructor at the time, he lent me a, a video cassette of uh, uh, The Big Boss. Probably the, the most impactful Bruce Lee film for me as a youth was Enter the Dragon. Enter the Dragon, obviously it's the most notable, most famous one. And just him kicking ass and taking names, you know? My favorite is, is Game of Death. Game of Death is my all-time favorite. We all know kicking Kareem Abdul in his face, even though you're about three feet shorter than him. I can't imagine what, what that would have been like to see it in the cinema the first time with a, you know, an auditorium full of people, and he does that, and everybody gasps at the same time. I wish they would replay that more on TV, because I need to set my TiVo. Bruce Lee's films became a cultural phenomenon. 
one helped cement his icon status. I mean, there was nobody like him. He's the bad boy, he's breaking all the rules. He really brought this like street style, like raw edge. Bruce Lee stole every scene he appeared in because he had an edge above the typical action star. Formerly a drama major at the University of Washington, he was an actor with serious conviction. Bruce, as an actor, was great. He took his craft as uh, being an actor very seriously. And he was a perfectionist. There's a lot of subtleties in his, in his movies that, that he was trying to portray. Just him walking from point A to point B, just the way he walks, you can tell. Don't mess with that dude. And there would be moments of depth and where you could see what he was thinking and that there was a soulful uh, quality to the way he worked. Lee worked hard to hone his acting skills, but the perfectionist in him demanded to learn even more. He wanted to master the entire filmmaking process. The way he choreographs his fight scenes are just amazing. <laughs> language that he used was really designed to make the action more enhanced. It's not just the, the martial arts, it's the martial arts blended with the camera work. It's acknowledging that the camera work is just as important. You can shoot a great fight and if you shoot it from the wrong angle it's gonna look terrible. Lee cared very much about how things look. So he decided to take control. He liked the precision, the quality. You better have the cameras ready because he's going to do it the first time. He understood cinema. He really did. Bruce Lee would do it all. Transcending the role of actor, he went on to write, choreograph, direct, and produce for film. And his standards were high. From his first starring role to his later work behind the camera, he held tight to a guiding principle, keep it real. This was a major deviation from the kung fu films of the past. Well, originally, uh, when you had martial arts based films in Hong Kong, they were very fantastic. You know, they usually involved these guys who were mythic warriors that could fly through the air and were incredible swordsmen. <laughs> What he really did with, with martial arts and with, with action films is he simplified it. There's no gadgets, no one's flying. Like, he made it as real as possible, and that was his philosophy for Kung Fu. He wanted the movements to be crisp and have a realistic reaction to it. Every time you go flying through the air as if you got kicked good and hard. He made it awesome and cool to just be organic, to be real. The sense of realism that Lee brought to his films had to feel authentic, for this was a man who knew what it was to fight. When I say the name Bruce Lee, what does that mean to you? Bruce Lee was hot. Bruce Lee was fire! In his movies, he'd take on like 10 dudes and light everybody up fire! with one punch. The sound effects, the noises he made when he would strike. <laughs> somehow more animal than most people and more godlike than most people. He immortalized confidence. You could see it in his eyes, you could see it in his body movements. He just knew that he was a badass. And I mean, I'm a badass, but damn. Bruce Lee, a master martial artist, an expert fighter, and one of the most badass people ever to step on screen. But what's cool about Bruce Lee is that he took martial arts, did it his own way, and put it in film. This punk rock. Now, Bruce Lee lives in the series that celebrates the life and legacy of the greatest martial artist of all time. We'll show him. On this episode, we take on Bruce Lee, the entertainer. Lights, camera, kung fu entered the ultimate action star. Bruce Lee blasted onto American movie screens in the early 1970s. Today, he's one of the biggest film icons of all time. He literally was my first hero. 
He was a superhero in my mind. Bruce Lee's screen presence was electrifying. With a unique blend of physical ability and personal charm, he broke the hero mold. Jean-Claude Van Damme, Steven Seagal. But the fact that these guys became huge action stars, it's not because of Clint Eastwood, it's not because of Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's not because of Sylvester Stallone. It's because of Bruce Lee. He's been gone for nearly 40 years, but on screen, the Bruce Lee legacy is as potent as ever. Watch any of his films, even for the very first time, and his genius is impossible to miss. <laughs> Coming up on Bruce Lee Lives. He threw down in his movies. You wanted to be able to do that. And battled on the streets of Hong Kong. Growing up in a rough area where he had to defend himself. He fought Chinese traditionalists. He defied the Chinese martial arts community. Injuries. You gotta overcome injuries. And the Hollywood system. I even think of him as like a hustler. Bruce Lee's spirit is alive today as others fight for their goals. This is a guy, he went out and did it. There were no limits. And overcome obstacles. Everybody has an obstacle they have to overcome. It's Bruce Lee, the fighter on Bruce Lee Lives. Ryan, when you hear the name Bruce Lee, like, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? When I hear the name Bruce Lee, the first thing that comes to my mind is the poster that hung on my wall when I was about eight years old. Dynamic hero, action fighter dude. <laughs> Just an iconic figure. Whenever he's on screen, you kind of can't take your eyes off him. Someone that made martial art more than what it was. Mayhem Miller. Well, when you first say the name Bruce Lee, it conjures up a million images of fancy kicks and the classic singing sounds. Whoa! Man, Bruce Lee has had an impact on every martial artist or every moviegoer for the past 30 years. Bruce Lee. He single-handedly changed movies and martial arts forever and remains an enduring icon today. You'd have to find someone almost brain dead who doesn't know who he is. Now, Bruce Lee lives in the series that celebrates the life and legacy of the greatest martial artist of all time. On this episode, we take on Bruce Lee, the fighter. You want to fight? I'll take you on. Bruce Lee was a man who was used to winning his battles. But in his fight to be a Hollywood star, he faced his fair share of hurdles. But even to someone as determined as Bruce Lee, the Hollywood system was a formidable foe. You gotta think of the racism that he faced back at that time. Where at that time, not too many people have seen an Asian guy on a TV show where he's like the star. My last name is Lee, Bruce Lee. Sure, in 1966, he won the right to play a television sidekick in The Green Hornet and got other small roles in films and TV. But Lee believed he had the chops to be a leading man and wasn't getting the offers. I think about what my godfather went through back then because Hollywood kept telling him, you know what, we just don't think the world is ready to accept somebody who's an oriental. I mean, he saw it left and right. The last draw came when he helped develop the TV show Kung Fu, then watched as the network gave the leading role to a Caucasian, David Carradine. Kung Fu, yeah. He had helped come up with the premise for it. And then all of a sudden, to be have that project pulled away from you because of the way you look. Come on. Because if you're an investor in that picture, he understood that. But then he felt frustrated at that time period. But in true Bruce Lee fashion, he fought through every roadblock, one way or another. My father and my mother always tell me the story as they said, what are you going to do, Bruce? And he goes, circumstances, you know, hell, you know, I make circumstances. And so thus he went on to Hong Kong and he got together his own team and his own group and he made his own projects. That's why he went back to Hong Kong. I remember when he was going back, he said, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do pictures and I'm going to direct and I'm going to learn how to cinematography. I'm going to learn how to 
even write a script. And I thought, my gosh, he's a martial artist. But I think he proved a lot of people wrong. When his Hong Kong films broke box office records, Hollywood finally took notice. Bruce Lee fought to be a movie star, and he did it his way. I also see him as one of the original fathers of independent filmmaking. I really do, because, you know, he knew that, hey, if I can't get the studios behind me in Hollywood, then I really have to make my own path here. And I love how he really took control of his destiny in his own life. I even think of him as like a hustler, you know what I'm saying? Like, he had to pave his own way to break into mainstream cultures. I remember he didn't want to be just like the sidekick, you know, because he knew he was more than that. This is a guy, he went out and did it. There were, there were no limits. He was a true rebel and a successful one. 